Hey, uh, disclaimer. Those who wail in the depths of despair, what do they share in common? It appears they've all erected a shrine in memory of the past, releasing their screams of anguish in the name of worship. Pray tell, where does the genesis of happiness lie? If all that serves as our lifelines, ushering ever-existent souls to a new world, is to lament, what will it be? That which beckons us to cease our religious adherence to fate, to seize control even in the face of hopelessness. My dearest, please guide me. Show me how to stay beside you. Give me the courage to go to lengths no hero would ever go. Bestow your favor upon me so I can follow the river of death downstream alongside you. Who is it? Who is pleading for my attention so gently? It's too late for my confession, isn't it? The beauty of your silent refusal makes it almost painless. The creases next to his eyes deepen further as he gazes at me. Tears flow freely down his face, tracing uneven paths akin to the tremble in his voice. Why is he showing such a pained smile? Who is this person? His solemn gaze pierces through me, and it's as if the barrier between us suddenly dissolves. The wind, relentless against my skin, no longer leaves me a mere spectator in this moment. The calluses of his fingertips graze mine, his palm firmly pressing against my gloves. Yet any attempt to generate a semblance of heat is thwarted by the breeze that gently sways the surrounding greenery. When was the last time anyone held my hand like this? The painting needs you. You must show me the key to the door, so we can be freed from the chains of despair. Ugh. Where am I? Feels like I had the weirdest dream. But then again, what should I expect? It's been ages since I had a decent night's sleep. Grade school, maybe? No, even earlier than that. My parents had me enrolled in after-school lessons by then. It's this late, huh? I suppose the hospital shifts tired me out more than I expected. Who knows how exhausting my schedule is going to get once I officially become a resident. Look at this mess. Just a couple of hours of shut-eye and the whole desk is cluttered already. I can't afford another lecture from my parents. Especially right before the graduation party. Or as they insist on calling it, the commencement ceremony. They've always been sticklers for names. I like to imagine they're eagerly awaiting the moment they can address me as doctor. It's been a lifelong dream of the family, after all. Anyway, time to make sure nothing is amiss. Every document must be perfectly in place. Not a single one can be out of order. Oh. Right, uh, I guess I can make my own character then. Um, give me a moment, by the way. Alright, done with my character. Let's go. Seems like everything is in order. I might as well finish cleaning out my dorm before sleep tempts me again. Where should I focus on cleaning up? The bookshelf, my desk, the walls. I'm too tired right now. Eh, I'm gonna start with the bookshelf. So many books. My parents went all out. Even at buying things our family needs to be the best. Perks of being an only child. Oh. Oh. Okay. There are titles on anatomy, physiology, histology, and a bunch more. Not to mention the textbooks for residency exams and notes from our clinical sessions. There's that skull they gave me after my first class on anatomical dissection. The scent of formaldehyde might still be on it. I remember spending hours memorizing all the sutures, for amina, metasis, arches, basically everything someone could think of. One week later, I found out we had to memorize innervations too. 
I'm not touching those cranial nerve mnemonics ever again. Uh, hey, mom had so much fun bragging about how I studied for fun to everyone at family gatherings. Where should I focus on cleaning up? My desk. My trusty personal computer. The object I've cursed countless nights with bloodshot eyes and migraines. The screen glare was unbearable. I even had to get a separate lamp just to save my eyes from being fried. Our dorm had this lights out policy that became quite the hassle during late night study sessions. Still, it's better than staying with my parents. If dad had his way, I would be going to sleep at midnight and wake up at four. Where should I focus on cleaning up? The walls. I'm surprised that those taped paper notes are still hanging on after all these years. There's practically a note for every subject. Charts for gly glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and whatever else is. I wish I could add some color to my room, but it's just not worth the hassle. Besides, my family would have a field day if they knew I was wasting time with anything other than becoming a doctor. At least the sticky notes managed to evade their scrutinizing gaze whenever they came to visit. Okay, we're done. Bye. I, I, I'm i not too tired. I went through everything. Wait, I, I guess I'm too tired now? Easy task first. Time to prepare the smaller donation boxes. I think I remember there being some under my bed. I slowly shuffle my way over, squeezing through the narrow bottom space with caution. A hand skim along the side rail, picking up dust particles along the way. Never knew I'd be so grateful for these sweat-wicking gloves. Finally, my fingers find the rough edges of what seems like a beaten-up cardboard. It feels even more worn now than the other boxes scattered around. With some effort, I tuck the box closer, feeling its weight resist my pull. However, after a bit of struggle, I managed to nudge it past the side rail. Let's see what's hiding in here. Rummaging through the contents, I discover a mishmash of tools and instruments. How on earth did these end up here? Scalpel, dissecting scissors, and forceps from my old surgery practice kit. There's even the propofol injection from the pharmacology lab. I knocked myself out with it, but it's probably expired by now. Let's see. A diff later. Handy in a pinch, I guess, but who knows how old this relic is? What's this old stethoscope doing here? I swear I ditched it ages ago. It was useless during cardiology clinicals. As I keep sifting through the stuff in the box, I stumble upon something flat. It's got this rough, sturdy feel to it, almost like a piece of linen. I try to pull it out, but it kicks up another cloud of dust, coating my hands. What the hell is this? A painting. Its surface is marred with rough patches. Several pixie-like characters stand next to each other with interlocked hands. The lines are shaky with incomplete coloration, giving the paintings an unfinished, almost sketch-like quality. However, their youthful faces radiate a familiar joy. What the? How did this get here? I haven't seen this in forever. You can separate the art from the artisan since the terrarium of crafts breathes life upon itself. Yet, an artisan will always find themselves reeling back to the realm of arts, akin to the believer whose heart forever wishes to hear the divine voice of inspiration. All the songs have been written, and all the tales have been told. History repeats itself, and we continue our cycle of mindless creation. What use is it to paint, write, or make music, when it's going to be a copy of one thing or another. Perhaps it's to wash away our sins, to paint the fiery strokes of wrath, the insatiable craving beyond mere avarice, maybe even to emulate someone else's art in a fit of envy and vanity. One could certainly engage in the slothful desire of doing, meaning of doing meaningless pieces, but that's an art in itself, isn't it? Whether it's for praise or punishment, ought to be loved by all and be presented as a figure of gazing and lust. It's all the contrapasso of what determines a hero and a villain, the interplay of light and shadow, the chiroscuro of life. How did this end up here, though? 
I remember mom sorting through my boxes when I moved out. There's no way they let me keep one of my paintings after all those past arguments. It could distract me from school after all. Speak of distractions, I'm just realizing the blue one kind of looks like it came straight out of Cyanide and Happiness. What's this half sketch character doing here? Perhaps it was a mistake in shading, but the ethereal mist surrounding him really sets this pixie apart from the others. His visage, etched with pain, triggers a sense of familiarity, so I can't quite place it. Perhaps it's related to the eerie presence around him. Look at yourself, rooting all alone while everyone else is having fun without you. At this rate, they are going to completely forget about your existence. Maybe I should finish your drawing so they can't ignore you anymore. Loneliness makes you stand out, not fit in. Dwelling in self-pity won't earn you sympathy from the cheerful crowd over there. You're only making them more eager to flaunt their sparkling aura in your face. I delicately pr place my hand against the painting, tracing the contours of a silhouette upon the textured linen canvas. Or perhaps you're trying to grab my attention, you sneaky little villain. Wait, what? <laughs> what's going on? Is this character really staring at me? That is so freaking creepy. I guess I'm starting to hallucinate from the tiredness. Why am I even having conversation with someone from a painting in the first place? Nostalgia must be hitting me harder than I thought. Whatever. I just have to push through the graduation party. It'll all be worth it. The parents will be over the moon. They'll tell me how proud they are. How they could have wished for a better kid. I don't mind sacrificing my old hobbies, my artwork, or anything else. As long as it helps me achieve their dream. Am I going to be Isekai again? My dearest God, please, guide me. Show me how to stay beside you. It's him again. The painting needs you. You must show me the key to the door so we can be freed from the chains of despair. I don't know how he sounds like, actually. Like, I'm looking at his face and I'm just wondering, like, how would he sound like if I were to voice him? God, it's a little tricky. The painting. I glance at the canvas once more. There's something about it that draws me in. Perhaps I should examine it more closely. It might offer a clue about who that person was. These cheerful heroes seem suspicious. I should start with them first. The strange man appeared happy despite tears streaming down his face, so it most likely isn't the sulking character. Uh, well, uh, who do we... I should focus on the blue pixie? The blue color scheme. A diligent character, exerting their leadership and skillfully negotiating the best outcome for their team. I don't think it's that one. I have to keep searching. The red pixie. The red color scheme. A fiery character, rebelliously risking it all to protect their comrades and keeping them out of harm's way. I don't think it's that one. I have to keep searching. Yellow pixie. That yellow color scheme. An intelligent creature, employing their knowledge to navigate tough situations and remaining composed for the sake of their team. I don't think it's that one. I have to keep searching. Uh, the green pixie. The green color scheme. A caring character, showcasing their generosity and readily embracing the topic of self-love, nurturing everyone's well-being. Yeah, I don't think it's that one. I have to keep searching. Purple? That purple color scheme. A grandiose character, express expressing their appreciation and praise for the team's efforts, validating everyone's contributions. It's not that one. Let's keep looking. Uh, the pink pixie. The pink color scheme. A kind-hearted character, spreading love and acceptance to everyone, drawing them close with their innate charm. I don't think it's that one. Got to keep searching. I don't have time for this, then. That's enough. Prioritizing my graduation is key. Otherwise, there won't be any good news to celebrate. Mom and Dad will be disappointed if things don't meet their expectations. 
My dearest mom and dad. I'm getting a card again. Disappointing indeed. Wasting your time instead of properly studying for exams? Ugh, they're here again. Must be nice to live rent free in someone else's head. Yeah, I will dismiss them. Is it my fault for simply wanting to be loved? If I'm nothing but my parents' puppet, I'm a useless one now. Putting your thoughts and effort into each step as you grow up. That's how I was brought up. To be the best of the best. When I first picked up that canvas, I realized there was another feeling inside me that I couldn't kill off. Lying dormant beneath the heavy weight of my responsibilities. In the presence of light from the canvas, those emotions sprouted and extended their new green shoots, reaching high above, never once wavering. Even though I had. I believed that they'd accept me, straying from their wishes and dreams. Maybe if I tried to emulate those smiling heroes, those fairy-like creatures which seemed to exude all that I ever wanted. They say even tattoos embedded deep within one's flesh fade with time. Where are these colors, strokes, and sketches embedded? That they've remained so deep within me. That this memory still acts as my contrapasso, a punishment fit for my sins. A villainous child like me doesn't deserve to. Give me the strength to go to lengths no hero would ever go. Those eyes, where have I seen them before? Bestow your favor upon me, so I can follow the river of death downstream alongside you. Why do you wear such a pained smile? Why does it seem like I'm loved and treasured in your eyes? I had a clearer view this time. It's definitely similar to him, isn't it? A half-sketched character, his head looming downwards, as if weighed down by a heavy burden from above. I like the other vibrant, paint, uh, painted fairies. His proportions are only rendered in pencil. He was the only character I couldn't finish at the time. The realization slowly makes its way down my throat. I feel the flames of embarrassment and shame more intensely than ever. Perhaps it's because I couldn't even finish the one task I secretly aimed to achieve during those childhood days. But then again, seeing his defeated look again, ignites a warm fire inside me, a similar heat to when I saw the vision of that strange man holding my hand. Maybe it's because I've grown accustomed to living in this sense of chaos and duality that I empathize with his position as the outcast. Perhaps this had been my holy sanctuary all along, as a devious villain who's only able to ruin the world they created. We can't both be puppets to someone else's will. Might as well turn you into a complete character, so you can stick it to those hero-like pixies. I rummaged through my desk, searching for something to draw with. The, sar the sharp end of a pencil pokes at my fingertip, and I quickly seize it, gripping it tightly as I set to work on the canvas. I hope you don't mind if I mess this up. It's been quite some time since I've done my artwork. However, I'll do my best to make you the biggest, most beautiful, and best of them all. Ultimate muscle mass awaits you. I focus intently on the sketch, each stroke deliberate and precise. The sound of the flowing movement of the pencil fills the room, a comforting rhythm that envelops me. With each stroke, I feel myself becoming more immersed at the task at hand. The friction of the paper beneath the pencil gives me a sense of warmth, as if the canvas itself is alive under my touch. When was the last time I had this much fun? I could keep doing this forever. Almost complete. Just have to find something to color him with and then... Are you there? God? It's me. Whose voice was that? Ugh. Head is ringing. Thank you. For coming back to me. Who? Honestly, the painting is really freaking creepy. Who are you? I'm alone. The 
There's no one by my side. Nothing remains. Except for my god, Lion. Did I just get isekai Where am I? What's going on? Cascading waterfalls glisten like liquid crystals. Expansive meadows are adorned with exotic foliage. Each blade of grass seems to shimmer with its own unique vibrancy. The flowers, with petals of unfamiliar hues, sway gently in an unseen breeze. Endless rows of towering trees, cloaked in verdant foliage, their branches reaching skyward in a silent hymn to the heavens. The air is thick with the scent of life and growth, a heady perfume that envelops me in its embrace. That's not even all. On the distant horizon, a majestic rainbow casts an ethereal glow across the sky. It dances with a palpable essence of fantasy and magic, as if every ray whispers secrets of worlds beyond. Huh? I think I heard something. Who's there? Before I can finish my sentence, the source of the alarming sounds materializes before me. In a majestic fusion of bear-like stature and ethereal moth-like wings, he is tall and striking, reminiscent of storybook pixies or fairies. He kneels before me with a grace that be belies his stature, gently taking my hand in his own. His touch is electric, sending shivers cascading down my spine as he presses his lips tenderly against my gloves, leaving behind a ghostly imprint of warmth and longing. It's as if time itself stands still, the world fading away to nothingness as we become lost in each other's gazes. That gaze, it's so familiar. Could it be? It's you, isn't it? It's a strange man from my vision. You remember me, my dearest god. Pristine white fur cascades down his neck, while his tight-fitting top accentuates his bulging muscles. His black hair, stylishly tussled with a hint of spiky allure, falls in a way that allows a few strands to delicately veil his face. Despite the reverence in his appearance, there's an underlying ruggedness, accentuated by the weathered texture of his pale skin and his rough, scarred finger. Yet, amidst those contrasts, there remains an undeniable magnetism, drawing my gaze like a moth to a flame, evoking an aura of intrigue and danger. He's like a villain, ready to whisk you away. Um, are you sure you have the right person? My name is Lion, not God. I could never mistake you. God, he's hot! My creator is the most benevolent of them all. They are the generous giver and the kind receiver. They'll share their happiness and take our sorrow for themselves. I've been waiting for this day for so long. It's like a miracle come true. To see you in the flesh, right beside me. I spent 20 years apart from you, yet now we stand closer than ever. This is entering some dangerous territory. I need to get away from him. Who knows if he'll do something dangerous. I swiftly wrench my hand away from him, retreating several steps to widen the space between us. He offers no protest, merely gracing me with a soft smile that belies the tension lingering in the air. How do you know me? You're the charming recipient of my unwavering worship, my god. Worship? Indeed. You are the creator who fulfilled me with such bliss and completed me. Your mere presence has sustained me throughout these years. What you've given me surpasses anything I could ever offer or amount to. Okay, be more specific. What creation? What creator? What god? The painting, of course. Could it be that you're not? But it's impossible. You're... Ersas is still the same when you were a child. He's undeniably shady, yet I find myself oddly drawn to it. The peculiar terminology, the enigmatic world, and especially him, 
who keeps crossing my path. Come to think of it, he did mention something familiar. You're talking about my painting, correct? The pixie art work I've been working on until just a few moments ago? You do remember. How does that have any, any connection to what you're saying, though? Is this perhaps a test? You were the one who almost finished sketching me until a few minutes ago. Talk about how you'd complete me and make the biggest, most beautiful... Ah, that's enough, that's enough. You don't need to repeat what I said about your huge hulking muscles, okay? So embarrassing. Yet, yeah, in that case, is he truly the half-sketched pixie from the painting? He's that brooding, gloomy figure who was hunched in the center? While I need more information from him, trusting him is difficult. The question of why I'm here lingers in my mind. Plus, his behavior is highly suspicious. Where are we? Why isn't there anyone else besides us? Why are you asking? Is my presence not enough? Huh? What are you on about? Are you unsatisfied with me for some reason? Is that why you're asking for those heroes so early on? Heroes? Is it because these hideous scars or this torn wing of mine? There are other people here? Yes. I can't tell if I'm relieved because I can ask someone else the way back home or worry that they'll turn out a bit wrong in the head like him. Now that I think about it, maybe he knows about the way to return as well. As much as I'd like to spend my time frolicking around in a magical painting, I can't miss my graduation. I didn't waste 20-ish years of my life to reach the stage just to mess up this finale. I don't have any more questions. I think I got a fair bit more info from him. So it's nowhere near enough. He seems super obsessive, but I can't figure out why. Is it because I'm the person behind the painting? And I, fin I never finished it until tonight, though. Why would he be waiting for me? He mentions that my presence saved and sustained him, but I haven't even touched the canvas for so many years. He's deliberately concealing something. Now that I think about it, what's your name anyway? I don't have one. I've been incomplete all this time, so I wasn't worthy of being bestowed a name by you. Ouch! Somehow I feel guilty. Then again, why should I feel guilty when I'm the victim here? Look, I don't know what kind of idealized fantasy you have about me. It's not a fantasy. Whatever it is, I need to find a way to go back. You're telling me you've been waiting for a long time and that I'm your god of whatever, right? So why don't you do me a favor and tell me the way back home? If not, I might be inclined to look for someone else's help. There's no one like that here. Huh? No one here will be able to help you. Except for me. What do I do now? Should I coax him a little? Maybe he'll be more inclined to help me if I do. Okay. Here's the deal. I'll give you a name, and you tell me the way back. You don't want me to ask someone else for help, right? You don't seem like a bad guy. Otherwise, not getting through your pixie skull. You don't seem like a bad guy. And I am genuinely asking for your help. I've been striving towards my dream for so long, and I can't afford to miss this chance. If you know something, please tell me. I promise I'll give you a proper name afterwards. You'll surely be disappointed when you hear it. I've been waiting for so long, and now you want to leave so soon. I understand, but this isn't where I belong. Come on. Just don't be so upset about it. Just pretend I never came here in the first place if that helps you cope. Or you could just seethe. No, anything but that. His cry catches me by surprise. A jarring cacophony against the backdrop of our surroundings. His features twist into a visage both chilling and erratic. That doesn't seem like a good sign. I'll help. I'll help send you back if I must, but I will not erase his memory. Not until I draw my last breath. You're really going to tell me the way back? Yes. It seems I must. They're here already. Who are you talking about? Are they acquaintances of yours? No. Far from it. Their valor is far too clipped and torn to be called such a title. I can sense that wretched Ursus already. An essence with the embodiment of sin. There's that word again. 
Ursus. I wonder what it means. Isn't this a delightful encounter? The villain of the painting besides our lovely little creator. But no worries. We're here to save you from the evil clutches of this one-winged beast. The heroes are at your service, Lion. Yo, what in the world? Oh, it's dropping on July 1st? No way. Anyway, that was Chromatic Agape. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. So this game was actually released for this year's, like, Stain Red Yandere Game Jam, as well as Nano Rana, which is another visual novel game jam. And gotta say, it's really promising. I love the artwork. It is so freaking pretty. And God, I, I legit can't wait for the full release of this game. And I think... When that comes around, considering the length of the game, which is about 60,000 words, apparently, um, I'm likely gonna just do, like, one playthrough of it. Like, probably gonna go down one of the routes, but we'll see which way it goes, okay? Like, we'll see once the game is released. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And, as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.